this is Colonial Puppet, and in this video we're going to be combining two second series PowerBook G3 Wall Street laptops, each with varying degrees of damage and general wear and tear, into one PowerBook G3 Wall Street that hopefully has as little damage and cosmetic wear as possible. But before we can do that, let's first look at each laptop and see which parts are damaged and which parts can be salvaged. Starting with the laptop on the right. Oh wait, that's not very centered, one second. There we go. Opening up laptop number one, I can immediately tell that the texturing on the keyboard and trackpad is visibly worn. Hopefully the keyboard and trackpad of laptop number two looks better than this or else we're already off to a bad start. Moving to the sides of the laptop and thankfully everything looks to be in place here with no visible damage and the port doors on the back and to the modem both being in place. This unit came with both a removable battery and CD-ROM drive and as you can see I removed the battery but left the removable CD-ROM drive in place. Moving to the top of the laptop, and as you can see, it is in really good condition with no deep gouges or visible scratches to the rubber or plastic. And then flipping the laptop over to the bottom, you can see it's also in pretty good condition, although there are some noticeable gouges in the rubber around the Apple logo. So you might be thinking, so far so good with this laptop, other than some wear on the keyboard and trackpad, it seems to be in pretty good condition. However, let's open the laptop back up and take a look at the 14 0.1 inch 1024 by 768 TFT display. Unfortunately, I don't have to turn this laptop on to see that the screen has been completely destroyed. It looks like it received some blunt force trauma up in the top right corner and is definitely going to need to be replaced. Hopefully laptop number two has an intact screen that we can salvage. Speaking of which, it's now time to move on to laptop number two. Starting with the top lid, as you can see, it's in pretty rough cosmetic condition with some some deep scratches and gouges, especially towards the latch. So ideally we'll be using the top lid from laptop number one rather than this laptop. Surprisingly though, the bottom of laptop number two looks to be in a lot better cosmetic condition compared to laptop number one. And opening up laptop number two, you can see the keyboard and trackpad are in a lot better condition compared to laptop number one. As you can see, the texture of each have not worn away. But zooming out, you can see a pretty major problem with laptop number two, and that is both screen hinges have failed and can no longer support the display assembly. And while the screen of laptop number one was a bit wobbly, I think I can salvage at least one screen hinge from it, and hopefully another from this laptop to make two working screen hinges. But the good news is the screen itself from laptop number two looks to be in good condition and isn't completely shattered like with laptop number one's screen. And lastly, no battery or CD-ROM drive was included with laptop number two. So with that overview out of the way, it is now time to start building our good laptop. And my first order of business is to take the screen from laptop number two and place it in the screen assembly of laptop number one because that was the one that was in better cosmetic condition. Since the screen hinges of laptop number two are destroyed, I'm going to use this panda in a hat to prop up the screen so that the laptop is easier to work on. Next there are two latches hidden within the drive slash battery bays which detach the keyboard like so. Next, there are these two ribbon cables that I need to detach. When I first tried unlocking these ribbon cables, I realized they pull out like so and that they're on their own separate circuit board. Next I use a plastic spudger to unhook these plastic clips on either end of the keyboard, after which the keyboard is then free and can be lifted away from the laptop. Next it's time to remove this metal... As I was saying, next it's time to remove this metal shielding, which normally would have two screws holding it in, but as you can see, this one screw is missing. So I'm just going to undo this screw here. and then I should be able to pull off the metal shielding with this convenient little handle. Under the shield you can see there's the CPU and there is the RAM. Next I just need to undo this single captive screw which will then allow me to pull out the hard drive. 
And once the hard drive is out, I can use this plastic spudger to disconnect the board containing the CPU and RAM. Next, I undo this ribbon cable and unscrew the severely stripped screw. That will allow me to remove this daughter board containing the modem. Next, I need to adjust my panda to tilt the screen back as far as it'll safely go to remove this strip of plastic in between the two speakers. After which I pull straight up on this ribbon cable to remove it, as well as this cable by the opposite screen hinge. Next I turn to the port door on the back of the laptop, revealing these four screws that need to be removed. Once they are removed, the entire screen assembly can be lifted away from the rest of the laptop. Now to remove the panel from the display assembly. There are six screws to remove, four of which are covered by these rubber caps, and the other two are covered by these flat little plastic pieces. After all the screws were removed, it was a terrifying game of finding all of the brittle plastic snaps and trying my best to undo them without breaking any while separating the two halves of the display assembly. Next I remove these screws to remove both the screen hinges and the panel itself. We'll get back to the screen hinges once the second laptop is disassembled as I'd like to get a working pair from the two laptops combined. But anyway with the screen removed let's get to disassembling the second laptop. And just to recap, laptop number two is the laptop with the good screen and with the least worn keyboard slash trackpad. However, the top of the laptop is the more cosmetically worn of the two and it seems like there are issues with both of the screen hinges in this laptop so my goal is to take the screen from this laptop and put it in the assembly of laptop number one because that was the assembly that was in the best overall cosmetic condition and then hopefully between these two laptops I can combine the pieces of the screen hinges somehow to make a pair of working screen hinges and if that all works out then theoretically I'll have a nice screen assembly with a working panel that's in cosmetic cosmetically good condition and with two working hinges which I can then combine with the bottom of laptop number two because that's the laptop like I said with the least worn keyboard and trackpad and believe it or not I was able to piece together a pair of working screen hinges between the two laptops so now it's a matter of moving the good panel from laptop number two into the screen assembly of laptop number one, which was the assembly that was in the better cosmetic condition, along with the two working screen hinges. And after that, it's just a matter of reassembling the rest of the laptop using the bottom half of laptop number two. Now at this point in the reassembly process I wanted to make sure that the laptop was actually working so I plugged it in and as you can see the hard drive and screen are working perfectly as well as the keyboard and trackpad. So after breathing a sigh of relief I can now return to the reassembly process.
And once the reassembly process is complete, I give the laptop a light cleaning with some isopropyl alcohol before realizing I forgot to reinsert these little rubber covers in the screen assembly. So after popping those back in and doing a little more cleaning, it was time to repopulate the battery bays. The first bay I populated with this nifty third-party VST zip disk drive, and the second I populated with the standard CD-ROM drive that came with the laptop. I figured that since none of the batteries I have for this laptop still hold a charge, I might as well go overkill with the drives, as having both a CD-ROM drive and a zip disk drive might prove to be useful in the future. And yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. We were able to combine two defective PowerBook G3s into a single working PowerBook G3 that is in relatively good cosmetic condition. The screen is nice and bright. The keyboard and trackpad are in good condition and not noticeably worn. The screen hinges are nice and firm and it has the added benefit of being able to read both CD-ROMs and zip disks. I've always wanted a PowerBook G3 in my collection mostly because I've always loved the industrial design of these laptops, I feel like it still holds up even to this day. Plus it was one of the last, if not the last, laptop from Apple to sport the classic rainbow Apple logo. But anyway, that about wraps it up for this video. Thank you very much for watching, and as always, this has been Colonial Puppet. Have a nice day.